This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. Hey, if you're listening to this weekly Blitz episode on the Remarkable Results radio stream, thanks. I appreciate the listen, and I hope that today's message will resonate with you personally. I want to strongly encourage you to go to Apple, Google, Spotify, or your favorite listening app and search for me, Chris Cotton, Weekly Blitz, and follow or subscribe. It costs absolutely nothing, and you'll never miss a weekly Blitz episode. As a reminder, you will not always be able to hear my weekly thoughts on Remarkable Results as part of the Aftermarket Radio Network. This episode is a cross-promotion so you can taste the Weekly Blitz. So please follow me so you won't miss an episode. Thanks so much for your support. It's your Weekly Blitz with Chris, keeping you in the game. Hello and good morning, everyone. I hope the world finds you well and you're having a great day. Chris Cotton here from AutoFix Auto Shop Coaching, where we work hard to support your financial success. If you have an idea for a show topic or just want to talk shop, get with me at Chris at AutoFixSOS.com. And so let's go with alignments as a profit center. Alignment machines typically are too expensive in the beginning. Most most smaller shops don't have them, and that's one of those things that they buy as they grow, right? In the beginning, you're taking your alignments, you're following them out to somebody else. You could have control issues, quality control issues and things like that. So you decide, hey, I'm making money now. I'm going to buy an alignment machine, which is a big investment. And you talk to whoever the rep is. Not going to mention any names because none of them um, pay me to do that. So what you do is, is you talk to them and they're like, oh, based on your your labor rate and this and that and how we're, how we're going to do all this. What you need to do is you need to sell three alignments a day and this rack will pay for itself. Right. And you're like, Oh, great. And you call me and you're like, Chris, I got to sell, I got to sell three alignments a day to get this done. I'm going to buy an alignment machine. So every time I hear that, I pretty much have this exact same conversation I'm getting ready to have now with these people, with shop owners. First of all, if you're only doing three alignments a day, that's not enough. We don't want to break even on anything. You know, I'm going to talk about here in just a minute about alignments versus car count. But in the beginning, you need to have bigger, grandiose ideas on how you're going to sell alignments. Because the first thing I, I tell people, you want to sell three, I want to sell six. How are we going to get there? And they're like, oh, I'm going to go out to the body shops. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. First of all, we don't want to be somebody else's sublet point for alignments. Alignments are for your customers only and they're not for call-in customers because everybody that calls in for alignment, there's always somebody down the street that's going to do it cheaper. They're probably going to do a, an inferior job and they probably have this as a lost leader, but that's what they're going to do. Here's the other thing. You tell somebody $79 for alignment, your labor rate's $125. You give your technician credit for an hour and you collect $79. You pay a technician $35 loaded then you've made less than what what you were doing uh, and discussing in your pro forma with the alignment guy. So I only want you to sell alignments to your current customers. If our plan is to sell to body shops and everybody else and bring people on the phone with a cheap alignment, I'm going to tell you no. Stop it, right? So that's alignments in the beginning. That's number one. And now we're going to move into alignments as recommended maintenance, okay? Everybody needs to have a set plan for what you recommend alignments on as recommended maintenance. All of your cars should be, every car that comes in your shop as repeat customers should be getting alignment in my professional opinion. Now yours may differ, but this is me. It's my my show, so I get to tell you what I believe. Chris Cotton's professional opinion is a car should get alignment every year or every 15,000 miles. So if you got somebody that's doing 30,000 miles a year, then they should be getting an alignment check and done twice a year. But for most of the population, alignment should be done, in my professional opinion, again, once a year or every 15,000 miles. Having said that, we go into alignments versus car count. If we have, if we're doing alignments and we're doing 50 cars a week, We should be doing alignments on 25 of those cars. 25 of those cars should be in for their yearly visit or whatever that is. And we should be selling five alignments a day. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay. Those cars come in. We look them up. And we recommend the alignment. 
Now, this is not breakdowns, guys. You, your alignments you should be doing as far as front end work, steering and suspension work, absolutely. All that has to be included in there, but we also have to do it as preventative maintenance. I mean, people spend a lot of money on tires and why are we do, why are we failing this? Like I talk to people all the time and we talk about it and everybody shakes their head and they're like, yeah, yeah, I got it. I'm going to do it. And then I talk to them six months from now and they're like, oh no, we're still selling two a day. All we're, all we're doing is on the repairs. We're not doing any as preventative maintenance. Two, you sell a set of tires, we should be doing an alignment check. Okay, so my alignment versus car count is half. Half your car count should be getting alignment. And I'll pretty much stand toe-to-toe with anybody and argue that count. If you look, see the last time your car, that car was in, it was probably in six months or a year ago, and it's due. Okay. One of the big issues I had in my shop, and this is going to take us to no, to number four, is in the beginning when we had only one alignment rack, is we would tell the customer, hey, we're going to do alignment. And that's where we stopped. We didn't pre-sell any of the alignments, which was dumb. I look back at it now and I'm like, Chris, what were you thinking? So we, so we, didn't, we didn't pre-sell any of the alignments at all. And by pre-selling the alignment, what I mean is, is, is so here's, here's the sticking point. The sticking point was we pull the car in, we'd compensate the heads, get it hooked up. Oh, it's out. And then we'd call the customer for the rest of the ticket and be like, hey, we got it in here. It does need alignment. Would you like us to go ahead and do it? Absolutely not. Don't ever do alignments that way. What you have to do is you have to pre-sell that alignment. You need to talk to the customer on the dropper when they make the appointment. Hey, it looks like due to mileage, your vehicle's due for the alignment check and the alignment itself. What we'd like to do is while it's in, we go ahead and get it on the rack. If the alignment's in, obviously we're not going to charge you for an alignment. If everything's green and everything's good, all we'll do is we'll just um, charge you for the alignment check. But if it's out, we're going to go ahead and, and finish that alignment for you. Does that sound good? So we're we're closing the alignment and we're getting the pre-sale on the front side. Okay? You have to pre-sale the alignments, everybody. It just makes everything flow better. And then once you do that, you'll be looking at doing like eight alignments a day and you'll be like, oh, Chris, how do we fix that? And at that point, if you've got one rack full all day, then we got to get another alignment rack so we can take that to the 12, 16 alignments a day. And I know how to do that. So we can talk about that later. That's one of those things. If you're doing that many, then we need to talk and figure out how to do more because that's a good profit center for you. Five, we have to make sure that we pay the technicians commensurate with what we're collecting. If we're collecting seven tenths, then we should only give them credit for seven tenths. And if our alignment has to be 149 in order to make that balance out where we're paying them an hour and we're collecting an hour or 125 or whatever that is, then that's what we need to do. And that's where we need to be selling our alignments at. I talk to shops all the time. They're like, oh, my effective labor rate is in the tank. What's wrong with it? And we get to looking at it and they're like, oh, well, we're charging $69 for an alignment, but we're getting our technician like 1.5 hours to do an alignment. And it's taking him like seven tenths. So we've got to straighten that out too, guys. We've got to make sure that we we pay pay the technicians fairly versus what we collect. Okay? So thanks for taking time out of your busy day to listen. This has been Chris Cotton from AutoFix Auto Shop Coaching. If you find yourself struggling in your auto repair business or have a feeling like you don't know what you don't know and you're eager to learn and grow your business, then please feel free to reach out to me. My email is chris at autofixsos.com or give me a call at 940-400-1008. Have a great day, everybody.